when Mihai asked me to, I think, sort of present today, I, I think it means cramming sort of five years worth of activity into 10 minutes. So I hope I think I can do it justice. Um, and I tried to, I think, to centre more on the how we got ready and, and we became fit rather than the what we actually delivered. It's inevitably we'll cover a bit of both because you can't talk about the how without the what. But but um, uh, it's very contextual, some of the things we're doing to, to Robert Walters. But let me introduce myself first. Dominic Dow, I'm the CTO for the Robert Walters Group. Um, for those that don't know, Robert Walters Group, if you move the slide forward, Hazel, is, is a professional recruitment firm. We trade under three, um, three brands, um, Robert Walters, Walters People, and uh, Resource Solutions. Can we just move the slide deck on one? That's brilliant. Um, so Robert Walters and Walters People is our direct to business um, agency businesses, and Resource Solutions is our outsourcing and advisory um, uh, we have two CTOs. I look predominantly after Robert Walters and Walters People and group functions. And I have a colleague, Rory, who looks after resource solutions, much more client facing technology. But actually, I underpin certainly from a data integration and group functions for, for resource solutions. Uh, moving on to the next slide, we are operating in 31 countries, soon to be 32. Um, probably just important to say that that is almost without exception organic growth. So whilst it's a global organization, it's very, I think, local in feel. Um, many of the new country startups are where we um, take an existing senior member of a team and, and move them into that country to establish. So the DNA and the culture, as we talk about it within, within Robert Walters, is quite deep set. So the passion around running your own businesses is quite strong. So delivering services you know, adds a challenge when you're trying to very much convince people to do things or don't do things because you know, there's the, the, the passion and ownership within the business is really quite strong. So um, without wanting to sound like a life coach, I think any fitness journey starts with a mindset change um, and that's the same for Robert Walters um, if you take the clock back to sort of 2017 2018 it's probably fair to say on Nigel's uh, adoption curve we might be considered laggards um, if you move the slide forward uh, again um, this is a slide actually just taken from our standard marketing intro I'm not going to talk about the bits on the on the left but actually for the last five years we very much talked around technology as an enabler um, I, it predates me so I can't be explicit about what that mindset trigger was but it's become very much more prevalent around the need for technology to be at the mainstay of, of our business to the point that five years on it's amplified to the point that it features in our annual report you know to our, our what we declare to the markets so it's a, an equal component uh, along with revenues and uh, and profit um, so that allows us to then in technology obviously to make a start and I think that's always the question where where do you start if we if we move on to the next slide um, I think there's a competition at the end to see how many fitness cliches Dominic can load into the presentation with a with a prize for the closest. Um, but it is a marathon, not a sprint. Um, as I say, it's been five years for us. Um, for those that have read Atomic Habits by James Clear, he's one of my favourites. Loads of one-liners, which I think are just so pertinent. The one that stuck out for me was that whilst even five years ago we had some really great goals, you can't, I think, get there until you, you know, you, you, you increase the maturity and levels of your systems. And by systems, you can talk people, technology, and actual IT itself. So we, we, we very much had to start. Um, I think, again, quoting James Clear, you know, success is the product of daily habits, not once in a lifetime transformation. So we very much had to sort of start um, at, a, at what I would call foundational activities, but we never labeled them as such, and they thread through our daily lives today. First was very much um, making sure we built the right relationship with the business. Mihai mentioned about, you know, relationship with customers. It's no different for us as an internal function to the business. Um, so we established a business partnering function, um, small in, in, in nature, but uh, giant in, in, in function to really be the voice of technology inside the business and importantly, the voice of the business inside technology. Um, for those that know the sort of business partnering maturity model, certainly five years ago, I would have said we were very much the, at the bottom rung of the ladder as order takers. Um, uh, and now we're very much, I think, as, as hopefully strategic ad ad advisors. Um, service desks and that sort of daily, very sort of simple services that, that, that our users uh, touch and feel every day was not well perceived, was disparate in, in, in global people. Um, so that's been consolidated and climaxed certainly recently in Service Desk Institute accreditation and just changing those daily things that we do for the business. Like most businesses, we did a fairly significant shift to the cloud, all but complete for us. I think there's probably two servers somewhere in a cupboard in London still running Windows NT, which I fear is probably why they keep me around still because I was really good at that. Um, so um, that's complete for us. Um, 
where there was a huge ERP transformation, um, certainly early sort of 2019, 20 through to the early parts of 21. Um, we had an, an aging sun system at group level, but um, a disparate systems across the 31 countries. So a move to um, a single dynamics 365 uh, finance and operations and talent HR solution is is complete. And then a load of stuff in end use, what I would call end use compute around unified comms, SharePoint, mobile computing. And I think like most of us, um, whilst we had some of it pre COVID, I think its adoption was was catapulted um, in, in the face of the pandemic, certainly by our business, which historically was certainly for our sales functions were very much office based. Um, so, you know, it did us as a favor as it did for many in technology to drive adoption, um, even if we had the technology. Um, so as I say, these were I, I labeled them as foundational, but actually they, they, they run through even even through today. Next big sort of phase, and I, I use the word phase lightly because it implies somehow linear and it wasn't. I mean, this again is threaded through. If we move on the slide, you know, the other big, I think, domain for us was around, um, and again, it started with a question. Uh, again, I mean, Miha mentioned this. It started with a question for us of do we buy versus build for our core business platform? I think that's a webinar in its own right, so I won't venture too much into that. Um, but suffice to say that we spent 2019 doing a whole market assessment of some main players as well as, um, you know, challenging products uh, and then working um, to, to look at what a, a build strategy would look like. Um, we went down the build route, um, you know, I think with that goal of gaining competitive advantage through strategic development decisions and, in, and integrations can only come from being in control of the product that runs your business. That was for me at the heart of the decision we made. Um, I think in becoming fit, um, I think you have to always understand your own physical limitations. Um, and that's where I think the, you know, the partnership with Amdaris comes in. We needed to buy in muscle, um, so cliche 34. Um, I think to, to really, um, certainly as you're in a transitional phase, you know, your needs and your capacity to get work done is increased for a period of time, but it's not permanent. I mean, it may be for many years, but it's not, it's not um, f forever. So we very much partner with 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 Amdaris to deliver what we call Zenith, our core CRM and applicant tracking system. Um, it's a multi-year program of works. You can see, you know, real simple terms. We built the foundations to prove we weren't all um, smoking drugs in the early early part. 2021 was a beta release for some of our less mature markets. And um, as of early hours of yesterday morning, we went live in our greater China business. So China, Taiwan and Hong Kong. So we're about 50 percent deployed globally with the rest to be done in 2024. And then 2025, we very much want to start to exploit the technology. That's not to say we're not doing some great things and in integrations today. But I think we're still very much building what's needed by the business to replace um, the legacy, the legacy platform. It's fair to say, I think, in terms of the partnership with, with, with Amdaris, it is, yeah, of course, it's a customer supplier commercial arrangement, but I think it's very much a partnership in the true sense of it. Um, I think both in delivery and I think I can speak for Mihal at an emotional level, I think, in terms of all the way down between Mihai and myself as well, all the way through our through our teams. Um, I think, again, to stick with the theme, um, I think we can't be successful without Amdaris in this space and vice versa. It, our teams are blended. They are agile squads. Um, so I think it very much feels like we're bench pressing while spotting for each other at the same time and in equal measure. So uh, that's a huge, uh, I think, main sort of work stream for us, as I say, many multi years, it takes stamina to stay the course. And that's not to imply that in 2020, we knew what we're going to do on 20, in 2023 explicitly, but we're still on the same trajectory to build and own our core product um, that runs our business so that we can differ differentiate in, in a competitive market. If we move on then, that, that really what that allowed us to do was take, I think, having done some of those new ways of working and, and the, the, the Zenith teams are, are sizable in nature. We've got seven, eight uh, agile squads, uh, either building features and functions or migrating data. Um, we've got components within that program that's looking at business change um, and the quality of the data in, in the systems. That allowed us, I think, to take that approach and really look to apply a more product-based approach to some of other other areas within technology. Um, and I think for those who again know the, the, the sort of standard product lifecycle, it's a typical bell curve. Um, and I think for anything that we would consider in the growth phase or maturing phase, we have a taken a product based approach. So first of all, digital recruitment, um, which is the Zenith piece I mentioned. And I love I mean, there's a million slides and pictures you can throw around product management, but I always love this or versions of this. You need people that are religious about building the right products, what we should do, and they need to understand the business. Then we have teams that come together to build it in the right way. 
Um, and that's, you know, I think for me about being product orientated and being being agile, and we very much have that across our teams. I have people from a Zenith perspective that are from the business who understand what good recruitment looks like and what the system should do. And then obviously we have our teams of analy analysts, product owners, researchers, uh, testers, uh, developers, and that's where we, we take significant resource um, from, from Amdaris as part of blended teams to deliver it in the right way. So we've done this across digital recruitment, which as I say, is Zenith, it's our, uh, it's our proprietary billing platform, it's our digital CV auto formatting solution and, and candidate marketplace. We've done it across HR and finance, so they very much drive the future strategy around our ERP platform, but also learning management, payrolls, um, pre-employment uh, pre screening and, and solutions like that. We very much, I think, to coin Mihai's phrase, one we've used for two years here data as a platform um, data as a product um, we use both terms we've got um, you know uh, three agile squads running a backlog working out what we do with data you know and we've got product owners and product managers around data to work with the business because there's a lot of different inputs to coordinate and balance priorities on um, we do it across um, integrations as well as well as our web development power bi and business um, analytics um, so we've taken this approach much more now um, blended of course with project worlds because we still have projects that need to get to things things delivered but a uh, big part of my team is is looking at making sure we build the right products and then collaborate with with um, our development teams and partners to build it in the right the right way and so I think that probably leads then neatly, I suppose, into what do what does that do and imply to what we're doing as a business around generative AI and, and AI. So if we move, move forward um, on the on the slide deck, um, we I think probably would again linking back to Nigel's adoption curve. We're somewhere in that sort of upward slope somewhere. We're definitely not laggards. We're definitely not. Um, innovators we're, we're somewhere up in the in the early majority um and actually i'll do a bit right to left here so actually we've always had an innovation team where some of our really great work's been done to demonstrate whether we should be using solutions um often third party or bought solutions um but do it in a quick trial live with the business work out whether it's got value and then deliver it more recently they've moved into very much looking at what we do and should be doing with ai i think like most businesses certainly at the back end of last year all our ceos was, were, were, were knocking on our door saying what are we doing with ai what are we doing with chat gpt um because certainly they were led to believe in with their industry peers and competitors that they were well stomping a, a march ahead i don't think they were but that's that's the narrative. So our innovation team is very much leading the way. We now have established our own Robert Walters AI playground. So we've enabled um, OpenAI within our Azure tenant. Um, we so and, and have a playground for, for us to both experiment, but also to do some real life use cases with the, with the business. We have a trailblazer group that the innovation team manage. That's about 350 people from across the business that are allowed to use that playground to try because I and they believe and we believe that the good innovations about what to do with it will come from the business, not from the technologists. Uh, you know, delivering the business. So we're doing some things around, you know, C CV, um, you transcri transcribing um, uh, interviews into meaningful data into our system. Um, job ad writing is something, you know, we don't publish half of the jobs we get because of time and effort. And actually, we can automate that and, and do some of that. So there's some real use cases that the team are driving forward, but working with that trailblazer group to very much um, experiment with what we're doing. So again, you know, th th this is small in nature, but but significant, and it allows us to, to really understand what we as a business should be doing with AI. As I say, that's the how. The what I think is still early, and will will we'll, we'll shape. Um, in the in the months and, and and years ahead, but as I say, I wanted to just sort of give a in ten minutes a flavour of what we'd done in Robert Walters about how we've got ready and as I say to, to I suppose summarise it's about being product orientated, making sure we understand what the business needs, and and having a way of working that is scalable with partnerships in, in place. So I'll hand back to to, to Nigel. 